finances, investing, estate and retirement planning? Well, I went to school so you don't have to. Welcome to Finances and the Interest Rate Hike with Kathy Pfefferhahn. Finances and, in conjunction with my company, Capital Coaching, helps people achieve their financial goals through personal, tailored, and attentive financial coaching services. Together, we create a successful financial plan by examining your spending and saving habits, then guiding and educating you to your own personal success. Coaching services include evaluation of your spending plan, building your savings, financing your retirement, examining your insurance needs, and planning for your individual goals. Please contact me at capitalcoaching.net to make an appointment for a free consultation. Last week, the feds did raise the interest rate as predicted. However, it was raised three quarters of a percent and not just the half percent that they hinted it would rise. Since last summer, it's gone up over 2%. So what does all this mean to you? Well, inflation is when something costs $100 now and $105 in a year. That same item will just cost more. It means you'll have less purchasing power in the future. Interest rates are raised to try and slow down the rate of inflation. The purpose of the rate hike is to put this inflation that we're seeing currently behind us. By raising rates, it will slow down the purchasing being done by consumers. Hmm? Why in the world is that good? It forces people to save money so that they'll earn more interest on their savings. If your bank rate rises, it makes you more money. And this is because the money that they lend out, and that's how banks make money, by making loans like car loans, home loans, and other unsecured loans. They make more money on your money, and they pass that along to you. This creates a situation where people don't want to take out loans since the cost of borrowing goes up, and that in turn limits how much money is in circulation. This leads to lower inflation as the feds try to encourage spending by lowering the interest rates. A completely cyclic event. And that's what the Fed's role is, trying to keep the economy on track with interest rates not too high and not too low and keep people spending. Since people don't want to spend more money on interest payments, they save more, or at least they don't want to make new large purchases. Additionally, the stock market takes a hit often. Since companies have to pay too much to borrow money, it hurts their earnings and revenue streams, so their stock prices start to drop. This can panic investors into selling, thinking they're going to lose lots of money, further causing stock prices to drop. That's why it's a great strategy to buy and hold stocks that you want for the long run. In fact, as stock prices fall, it's just like when items go on sale. You buy them then. It's a good idea to have a list of stocks that you're watching just before buying so you can wait for them to go on sale. This is truly the same as knowing that there's an item you want to buy and not wanting to pay full price. And then finally, once it drops in price, you should be ready to purchase it. For example, if there's a purse or a tool that you're wanting to buy but not willing to pay full price for, wait, because eventually they'll probably go on sale and that's when you should be prepared to make your purchase. Stocks go on sale when their value drops. But what if you need to sell because it's what you're living on in retirement? That's the person who has the most to lose retirees who need money to live on and their stock value goes down. This is why being diversified in your investing is so important. Having money in stocks and bonds, even though it seems like bonds earned less, and they generally do, they keep their value as stocks go down. Bonds are historically safe and are paid out to consumers. Stocks and bonds are affected in different ways by the rising rates because as money becomes more expensive to borrow, it decreases the supply of money available for spending. Once again, as interest rates rise enough, people start spending less, meaning that the cost of goods and services goes down because people can't afford to buy as much, and this causes inflation to fall. As of May 2022, Zillow's observed rent index found that rent costs were rising 15%. This increase means that rising rent, along with rising interest rates, keep people from buying a home because they have less money and borrowing costs more. And this leads to employees then requesting raises. Sometimes raising the interest rate leads to higher unemployment. As companies have less money to spend, they can't hire new workers or pay their employees more. When your salary does not rise, at least with cost of living, it's the same thing as you losing money. If your $1 doesn't buy the same amount as before and you're not given more money in a raise, then you will have a loss. In fact, it's the same as having your pay frozen. 
Many companies, school systems, and other employers kept pay scales the same during COVID, and already those who did not get a COLA, or cost of living raise, at least a minimum, make less money than they did in 2019. The federal stimulus money that we were given was meant to help keep money in consumers' pockets during the whole year versus just taking the credit at tax time. It seems like it worked, and that small increase monthly allowed families to save a bit more and have money to buy the basics. Raising rates also affects anyone who has variable interest rates for credit cards and loans. If you bought your house on an ARM or adjustable rate mortgage loan, you'll begin to see your payments going up as they collect more money and interest on that loan. Credit cards, too, can be charging consumers more as their rates rise, so the credit card balance that you're carrying will cost you more as well. 30-year fixed mortgage rates don't adjust when interest rates change and don't adjust once you have your loan. Right now, interest rates on a 30-year loan are about 6% and had been as low as 3.25 earlier this year. NPR gives the example of a $400,000 home and monthly payments rising from $1,700 earlier in the year to now $2,500 if you're taking out a 30-year loan. That alone can knock people out of the market. It seems that mortgage loan applications have dropped 15% since last year as well. Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, recommended that if you're a younger person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset and let supply and demand get back to where inflation is low again. Of course, some of this is caused by inflationary psychology. Investopedia defines it as a state of mind that leads consumers to spend more quickly than they'd otherwise would in the belief that prices are rising. We spend money when we believe prices will rise, spending now so that we can save money in the future. This is the market equivalent to FOMO or fear of missing out, believing that you'll miss out on selling soon enough or buying before prices go up. Sadly, some people have an irrational or emotional response to inflation, causing them to fight against the market sentiment and what the crowd is doing, causing a bear or a downward market. The difference between a bear and bull market is how the animals fight. Bears swipe down at their prey and bulls throw their horns up. The downward market means that stock prices as a whole are going down. And in general, that hurts stock performance as interest rates and stock prices historically move in opposite directions. Does anyone really win with rates rising? Yes. Those who put money into savings will see their money grow faster now. Your emergency funds or home buying savings accounts or any other reason that you're saving, you'll see those funds rise more quickly as bank rates increase. It's not going to be a huge gain right now, about 1%, but any amount of free money and interest should be a reason to be encouraged. CDs, certificates of deposits, and bonds have also been offering higher returns for consumers. For now, look at putting money in savings vehicles like CDs and money market accounts and don't sell company stocks that you believe in because they're dropping in price right now. In fact, you may consider buying more stocks and save money where you can while we all wait for the economy to recover. Because the market has always risen about three out of every four years. We just don't know when or how much. And the full impact of the interest rate hike could take up to a full year to be truly felt. This is Kathy Pfefferhahn. Thanks for listening to Finances and the Interest Rate Hike. I know you chose to listen and I'm grateful. If you enjoyed this episode, follow or subscribe for free in your podcast provider and share your favorite episode with a friend. I'd love you to leave a review because it brings financial education to others and helps people find me more easily. Also, let me know what questions you'd like answered or any topics you'd like covered by going to the website at financesand.net and leaving a message. You can also contact Capital Coaching for your personal financial needs at capitalcoaching.net. Finances and does not provide tax or legal advice, and nothing in this podcast is to be construed as such. Always consult a tax, accounting, or a legal professional for advice on your specific situation. Remember, I went to school 